So this is the joystick of my youth, and I absolutely hated it. Once I uh, outgrew the Atari and I got a computer, I had a Tandy, and this was pretty much the main option that everybody had. But this one is not in such good shape. So I thought maybe it'd be kind of cool to take it apart. I'm guessing it's pretty simple. And uh, we'll see. There might be a 1% chance that we can actually fix the thing. So uh, let's start taking this thing apart and see what it is. Um, now, this joystick was a Tandy joystick. But they did make the same joystick uh, by a company called Kraft. And uh, it was available for some of the IBMs. And uh, also just sold under the Kraft name. I remember that uh, from later on in life. But um, it was pretty much synonymous with the Tandys. So let's see what happens. What do we have in here? Uh, what's broken? So we've got the arm in here. And uh, we've got this little arm here is shattered in pieces. This arm here is shattered in pieces. And it uh, looks like some of it might not even be in there anymore. So this looks like a kind of a standard rotary encoder type thing. So it might be kind of cool to see if we can do something with that. Um, and this joystick had two buttons. Oh, there's all the pieces. Uh, this joystick had two buttons. And one of the things that was kind of weird about it is you would hold the joystick to the side. Let's say there, uh, for mode change, hold the stick in the corner. So yeah, you'd hold the stick in the corner and you would flip these two switches to decide if it was going to be free, almost like as if you were using like a mouse or if it was going to be spring loaded. Um, and so I very rarely used it in free mode. Every once in a while if I was drawing or something like that. But for the most part, it was uh, being used springy. Now, I think it'd be kind of cool to, if nothing else, I might take this mechanism and make my own tandy joystick. Uh, but it does seem like all the spring springing sprung things are actually still here. So I wonder if there's any way that we could possibly repair this mechanism. Um, let me see what I can do. So I think I got a little bit lucky. Um, I went on Thingiverse and I actually found some parts for these things. Uh, these uh, are very weird shapes. So there's a lot of support on there and I haven't even finished breaking out the support on this. Um, and I thought that <laughs> there's a very good chance I'm gonna break the part. So I went ahead and printed two sets of them. In fact, I thought I actually broke, what is it, this one here when I had that little chunk out. But I think that chunk is missing. Yeah, it is, that chunk is missing on the original part. Now, um, I don't think there's any way that PLA is gonna hold up as well as this uh, ABS or whatever this is. Um, and it might be something that would be kind of fun to print in some kind of exotic material, maybe even send it over to PCB Way and let them print it. But um, I am going to try to get some of the support off of this stuff and see what happens. Yeah, the support on this stuff is brutal and it might just be my printer settings, but um, these parallel jaw uh, pliers, which I think I've shown on the channel before, are really good because you can kind of grab onto stuff and, and pinch it and just grab it away and see what comes off. And for the most part, it's been pretty good. Um, again, these things, like when you look at what's coming off, you don't actually expect the print to look that good overall. Um, the next thing we've got are these little holes in here, which were filled in. And uh, I'm going to try to drill this one out. Uh, I'm going to start with a small drill bit. And I might be able to use that to get the screwdriver in here to kind of break that out. Otherwise, I will... See, I don't want to mangle that too much. I think this might even be D-shaped, which I'm a little hesitant to... Uh, yeah, it is. It's D-shaped. So I need to kind of get something through there. <clears throat> there we go. Wedge that out like a plug. And as you can see... That's D-shaped. Now, I don't think there's a very good chance that that's not going to deform uh, over time. It's got the, uh, as you can see in here, the uh, rotary encoder or whatever that is has to go through that. So, uh, I think that'll work. So, I'm going to go ahead and just do both sets of these while I'm at it, and then uh, I'll come back. So, I actually do have another one of these joysticks. This is an older one that is uh, less broken. This thing on the bottom is a little jacked up, but I thought... This would kind of give us a good idea of how this thing goes. Um, and so I'm going to take this out because this is going to fall out. And I'm going to take this one apart just so we get a good look at it. Well, there you have it. That one is a little bit different plastic in here. And I wonder if it's a little bit better plastic being that this is the older TRS-80 model. Uh, you can see they even took time to do little... Uh, bread twist ties around here to keep the wires separate and stuff. You can also see it looked like somebody tried to pry in here at one time or another. 
So I'm really glad I have this because I would have expected something to go on these two little prongs here and apparently they don't. That could be for one of the spring loaded features or something like that, but uh, I would have thought for sure something had to mount to this. So let's uh, see if I can get those new parts on the old controller. So I'm gonna use the Jake My power screwdriver on this and the main reason for that is I wanna be able to put a So I'm going to use the Jake My power screwdriver on this, and the main reason why I want to do that is because it allows me to keep a lot of pressure going downwards or going toward the screw while unscrewing it, and hopefully not strip this thing out. There we go. That's exactly what I wanted to see. I can have good control over it and pull that out, and then I think there's another one in there somewhere. So if I had to take a guess, this thing would short arm would long arm over to here. And this other one would kind of short arm around it. So let's try doing that. Now this, this does lift up. So I'm going to assume the long arm goes in first. And it might need some kind of calibration or something. Some you know, type of orientation. But we're just going to send it. Now this may need a little bit of cleanup being that it was 3D printed. Okay, so on one hand, I'm really glad this is a tight fit. Uh, I think it's going to have a little less chance of slipping later. But it does have some burrs in here that need to be cleaned off. And so we're going to just go ahead and do a little bit of filing in there, a little bit of cleaning up. And just see if we can get that a little bit smoother. Okay, so I have no idea if that last shot was on camera of me getting this thing on there, but it was a bit of a wrestling job and uh, it did kind of push out the rest of the um, of the plastic. So now what I want to find is the better of the two short arms and uh, this one clearly looks a little bit better. So we're going to gently get this out of the way and we're going to do the same thing. So if I missed it the first time, we'll see it this time. Uh, we're going to allow this shaft, well, we'll clean it up a little bit. Uh, I can see there's a couple birds that just might as well get out of the way. Um, and then for the most part, though, we're going to allow the shaft to kind of clear its own hole. We want as tight of a fit as possible, especially because this is PLA, not ABS. So we're not going to have the same kind of overall strength. Uh, and we just want to get this on there. So I'll try to line it up straight, get it started. I'm not going to do a lot of pressure until it's on. Now I can see it's on a little bit more. So now I'm going to put some strength on there and try to pop it down like that. Now it's close, uh, but as you can see, there's a little bit of clearance here that has to happen. So that clears out. You can see right down there, this thing has to clear the other piece below it. So we're going to push it down and now we are good. So we have the arm on and now I'm guessing that we're going to have to do some kind of trickery to get the uh, this little joystick arm on there. So uh, we're going to do this with, let's see, we have the wire coming out this side. We're going to have the solid pin up top, and we're going to have this flexible pin to the right. So we're going to put this up here. Oh, how are we going to do that? Uh, it's got to go the other way. What am I thinking? All right, so actually we're going to put the flexible pin up top and the solid pin to the right. And now we're going to lift this out like that. And we're going to lift this one out like this and get that in there so as you can see we've kind of got the whole thing semi-assembled and now i need to use my third hand and get the entire joystick up in the air and get these things to all slide in the slots Close. A little bit of interference somewhere. Or is there? It might already be in. I think it's in. All right. Wow, that was better than I was expecting. Um, now, the question is, is there anything that goes over top of this little thing? There's two little pins there. Maybe something in the... Okay, so inside this thing is the little pins that will hold this down and that kind of holds the whole assembly together and now these things here 
have to, I believe, go in these little grooves here, and this is what will set it free. Um, but I'm amazed that actually works. Like, <laughs> that's so cool. All right, so now um, I think the idea is that we want to start by having these pins. We want to try to make sure they go in together. So we're going to drop this down. And I think we kind of want to fiddle with this. So like right now, I can tell that's not grabbing at all. And maybe it shouldn't unless it's in the corner. Okay, it doesn't grab until it's in the corner, but it's still not like right. Okay. That actually works. Okay. So I think what the deal is, these pins don't actually grab unless the joystick is in a corner. Otherwise, they don't do anything. So I think that's pretty good. Okay, so I can't get the bottom free switches to fully engage. And this joystick, I'll have to go back and check the beginning of the video. But uh, I think this was off center to begin with. But it does seem to function. You know, it's it doesn't have the kind of uh, firm action that the original one does. There's a little bit of play this way, a little bit of play kind of in all directions. But, you know, for a light use joystick uh, as an adult, I think it's a heck of a fix, and whoever designed that thing on uh, Thingiverse, like kudos to them, I'll have a link in the description. Let me put this joystick back together all the way and I'll see if it feels any different. So screwing the thing together, it does feel pretty decent. If somebody were to remix this thing, I would highly suggest making this hole, if I can focus uh, this hole on each of these parts, just a little bit tighter. Um, I think the PLA will give enough that you can actually just kind of force it on there if you're careful. And I think that would give you just a little bit less play in the center. But um, for a joystick from the 80s uh, that was just a complete pile of junk, Fixing this thing up is pretty sweet. So I'm going to clean it up uh, in the future. I'm not going to do that on this video. But uh, I just want to let you know that there is hope for these things, even if you're just making something that will be good for light duty use. So, hey, thanks for watching. Happy Septandy, and have a great day.